Yo, welcome to Life in Perspective, a special episode. Y'all, first and foremost, I missed y'all. Like, I was just looking through, um, like, some of the episodes, and I think the last time we were together was, like, September. You know, we've been having virtual Bible study, which has been amazing, um, but I missed the Life in Perspective fam. Like, what's popping, y'all? Um, the second thing I'm most excited about is that I am here, able to record this podcast. Y'all, I am officially 30, you know? I have entered into a new decade, and it feels great. I mean, I'm just excited about what God is going to do. It's interesting because 29 was bananas. Like, it literally blew my mind. And I feel like I don't want to put any limitations on what God will do by, you know, expecting, you know, expecting. I, I, I don't want to put God in a box. So I am just listening, anticipating, you know, what God is going to do. And I'm also anticipating, you know, his voice and what he's saying in the season so I can move when he says move. And, you know, we can turn this world upside down. <clears throat> um, But y'all, the disruption, I think it was the perfect title for this episode because um, I experienced um, an extreme disruption to my everyday life seven days after I turned 30. Seven days into year 30, I was tested positive for COVID-19. And man, um, I'm just right now in this moment so grateful just for life and for health and for strength and more importantly like my community um I it's I think it's like it's tough because it's like a physical journey you know like you're physically ill but it's also like a mental like a mental thing too and I just you know I'm even grateful for the little things like being able to go outside yesterday um and even more so being able to breathe, you know, and have breath in my lungs and be able to get through this podcast without coughing. Um, I struggled this past week a lot with like breathing and doing regular things like walking around my house. And I was taking walks around my apartment complex, trips to the garbage can, like just trying to get like my wind and stuff back but man like God is a healer but he's also a protector and man like I I think it's the consistency for me it's the faithfulness of God that has just continued to blow my mind it's interesting like I have this newfound like it's like there are so many facets of God and I think we talk about that all the time but I think God is a father and like when you experience that, like I have an amazing dad and the crazy thing is as amazing as he is, it doesn't compare to how much God loves me. And just when you have that, um, the opportunity to experience God as a father and you're completely open to that, man, like it's, there are no words. And so, <clears throat> um, it's interesting because going into my 30th birthday, um, you know, I had on my heart that this was like the year of dedication. And for me, that meant like this was the year where I was going all in. You know, I have majority of my adult life been running from the call of God on my life for a numerous amount of reasons. And we are not going to get into that today. But I was just very intentional, you know. So 30 days leading up to my birthday, I fasted. Um which is very interesting, right? Because it's, it's fasting is supposed to be this time of consecration. You spend time with God. Um, but my life was moving at a pace that I couldn't really catch. <clears throat> and so while I was in theory fasting, I wasn't really taking like moments of stillness. Like I wasn't having moments of stillness. Um, but I definitely got that this past 10 days while being on quarantine and it's interesting how god works i mean when the pandemic first started um if you follow me on social media you know like my friends and i we started self-care saturdays we were 
on all these wild and crazy adventures and it wasn't because you know we didn't it wasn't because we underestimated COVID I think if anything the pandemic and losing people like as fast and as drastically as we were I think for us <clears throat> it just kind of brought like life is short and it's too short not to live it at its at its fullest you know like and I think because we work a lot and we're so determined and we're ambitious it's like it's easy to get caught up in just moving and going after things and not like taking moments to just enjoy life you know and so that was like the goal behind it I say that to say there were a numerous amount of times where I could have been exposed to the virus and wasn't and I think the timing of God allowing this to happen to me um I think it was strategic I think it was intentional I think I was completely not stewarding my health well, my body well. And it's like, you can't, my line sister texted me something earlier today, like you can't pour from a cup that's empty, right? And the reason I didn't know I had COVID was because I honestly thought I was just extremely tired because I've been working like crazy, overworking, um, if I'm completely honest, and was not getting the amount of rest that I needed, wasn't eating properly, obviously. And so my body didn't even have strength to fight off COVID, but I thought I was just like, my body was shutting down because I was tired and from lack of rest. And, <clears throat> you know, like, it's really interesting that God allowed it to happen because it's like, no, that 30 days that I attempted to consecrate going into my birthday, which I did, I, I got a lot from God in that time, but I know that there was something else that I needed. There were moments that I needed to have that my schedule wasn't allowing me to have. And sometimes, you know, in order for change to occur, a disruption has to happen. And it's so true because, <clears throat> let, okay, so <laughs> it, it, it's so crazy because um, my life was disrupted. Like I was on this, there's a scripture in Amos 9 and 13 where it says that God will like, basically you'll start receiving blessings on the heels of each other, like one thing after another, right? So, so much so that your head will swim. That was literally my life, right? That's biblical. That's, that's a God thing. But I think what we have to learn to do is steward the moments that God presents to us. We have to learn how to steward um, the blessings even. It's like, because the reality is that it's not going to be what it's supposed to be if I can't even show up my whole self. In the, We're not even talking about from a spiritual perspective, in the natural. Like if I can't show up in the natural because I'm extremely exhausted. As a creative, I know we have this thing where it's like we got to grind, we got to hustle, we'll sleep later. You cannot be as effective without rest. Like I am my best when I'm well rested, like, because then my brain is quick, you know, my ideas are quick, my thoughts are quick, my responses to, um, you know, the unexpected, it's faster. It's like, so that's like a misconception that culture has like made us believe it's not true. Like you need rest. And if I haven't learned anything um, from this situation, rest is a necessity. It's not a luxury. It's necessary. <laughs> and I think we treat it like that. We treat rest like, Oh, uh, you know, when I get the opportunity, you no, know, rest is a necessity. And if you don't listen to me telling it to you right now, your body will tell you. I, I'll speak for that. And I think, you know, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm all over the place because I'm, I have so much. I don't even know where to begin. But when you talk about disruption, like literally, um, I transitioned from TBN, um, the week of my birthday, my last day there was the 13th. I started a new position that Monday the 16th and then I was tested positive Tuesday the 17th. Um, so, <clears throat> um, yeah, talk about a disruption because COVID shuts it all down. Like it shuts personal, it shuts business, it shuts professional, it's just social, any form of anything, it's all shut down. And I think if I'm completely honest with you, that was the tougher part for me um, because the parts where I was sick, I didn't know I had COVID. And while that was extremely tough and it's completely different than any like flu or anything I've ever had because it wasn't going away. Like usually like when you get sick, like it progresses 
and then like you know you start to feel better that was not happening for me which is what was alarming me which was like okay maybe this is something else um but i think also the isolation part i think for the first time and we've been in a pandemic for majority of the year but i think for the very first time i think i experienced what the rest of the world had been experiencing like when it came to the isolation part and like that's that's different it is different i if anybody knows me just a little bit i'm an extrovert with introvert tendencies right so literally like i get energy off being in rooms with people like i like my friends like we don't even have to be doing anything like literally my love language is quality time like i i need like people but then i also have moments where i need to be by myself <laughs> so <clears throat> but for the most part like i need to be with people and these past 10 days were really hard because I didn't have that as an option. Like I literally was quarantined through Thanksgiving. Like, so I couldn't see my family. Ugh. And it it wasn't terrible, you know, like I know that could have been a lot worse. Like I didn't have to be hospitalized. Like there, you know, like I'm extremely grateful that my journey was, I think as small, you know, like, as it was but that was tough like not being able to see my my parents and them being worried and me being in california and they being in chicago um and then having to talk to my friends through the door like when they would drop things off and like not being able to just like that was tough for me like it wasn't even about working it like i think in that moment for two reasons i think i realized the importance of community like how important it is like to be around people but then also the importance of having community like my friends really show up like i freaking had covid and they like were like you need anything like they were i have one friend who i'm not gonna say her name because she'll be mad at me but y'all like i would not have made it without her like from bringing me like me tea like making sure i had vitamins like making sure i was eating right like and just even if it was just facetiming me and staying on the phone like making sure i was good like she was on facetime with my mom like i honestly like i think we sometimes take things for granted but i value like honestly value my community because they show up for me like my church family like i honest i'm so serious y'all like i freaking my family is in chicago i i don't have family here so like to be sick um with covid in the middle of a pandemic and not be able to like physically touch my family like my church family really showed up like i felt like and it's interesting because i also feel like while i was you know like going through covid i also think that god used like this moment one thing i know he did was like to heal like places in my heart that i didn't necessarily know were broken if that makes sense you know i have an interesting um dynamic and an interesting story that i've shared multiple times and you know how like we go on with life and we feel like things are good um i think also the things that we experience sometimes create like walls um and sometimes they are unconscious walls or subconscious walls that we don't know we have. And I feel like God did a lot. Like in those, like in those 10 days, like even like with just little things, like so I'm like, God experiencing God as a father is like it's it's amazing because it's like He knows what we need before we even know we need it. Like, or him knowing that we need it is the thing that reveals it was something we needed. Like even I lived in Long Beach, literally I moved on my birth, like the night before my birthday. And Long Beach from LA is like a 45 minute to an hour drive. So it's just like, and there was like this urgency to move like the night before I turned 30. So I wanted to wake up in my new apartment. But I also think that that was Holy Spirit because I would have been in Long Beach by myself, like 
trying to fight freaking COVID and that would not have, I, the Lord knew, like he knew I needed to be close. Um, but it's interesting because I was listening to a live um, and I heard Bishop say, you know, change doesn't occur uh, without a disruption. And it's interesting because I was explaining to y'all earlier, I'm sorry if I'm all over the place. That's why this is a special episode because I'm just telling y'all about my experience. Um, but basically, you know, to change, there has to be a disruption. So if you think about like in the conversation I was watching, Bishop was talking about like a woman who has a baby, right? And how her body is disrupted, her life is disrupted, like things have to change. I even think about, you know, having COVID and my life being completely disrupted. Like, but um, there was a change that happened. Like, y'all, I would like... I feel like people who listen to my podcast, I feel like y'all know me, right? You can hear the energy in my voice. Y'all, I struggle heavily with sitting still. Like, sitting still to record this podcast is only happening because I'm also talking. And now we've added video, so I'm looking at the camera. I feel like I'm looking at the people. But I really struggle, like... I've never been like medically diagnosed with ADD, but like if there was a poster child for ADD, it's me. Like I can't even take, you know, like if you're having a conversation with a group of people and there's like that awkward moment of silence, it could just be the transition in the conversation. It could be because nobody knows what to say, but that literally makes my skin crawl. Like it makes my stomach hurt. Like if there's that little bitty moment of silence, I'm going to be like, so like I'm going to say something to break the silence. Like I don't like awkward moments. I don't like stillness. I don't like quiet. Like it, it really, whoo. And let me tell you, 10 days in the same house. And I, I mentioned that I just moved. So imagine a house with minimal everything, right? Like to be honest with y'all, like I'm gonna tell y'all all my business. I don't even have a refrigerator. You know why I don't have a refrigerator? Because the guy who runs the building needs to measure so he can tell me what size I need to get. But guess what? He couldn't come in my house so I was quarantined because I had COVID. So I have a refrigerator, okay? So Postmates and Uber Eats, I'm grateful for them because they fed me, but, you know, when I wanted to eat. But um, completely lost my train of thought stillness silence right and so i told y'all about the fast and how i wanted uh i really 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 wanted god to transform me in that 30 days you know my that was my prayer you know that he would shift my heart and increase my hunger and my thirst and my desire like when i was going through and i was like in a really broken place there's like this hunger that you have for god that is really it's different to cultivate when life is going well. <laughs> and um, I, I was like praying to God about it though. I'm like, dang God, like I really, 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 really like there's this desire, you know, and I want it to be stirred up, you know, but I wouldn't sit still long enough. And so I think the Lord said, all right, cause you, you don't listen, you know, you don't listen, you won't sit still. So let me sit you still. And to be honest with y'all, I struggled with it even in the 10 days. Like, I was literally, like, the cu first couple of days I slept because, of course, I was, like, recuperating. But then once I started to, like, get back a little bit to normal but was still on quarantine, it was a struggle. I bought a PlayStation. I don't know why I did that. I do know I did that because I, I need things to... <laughs> I need to do stuff. Like, um... But when I finally submitted, right, to the moment, when I finally surrendered to the moment, I got what I needed. Um, and I think it was what God was trying to get to me had I just submitted to the moment of my fast that he called me to. Um, and while I thought I was doing that, I wasn't because life was moving quick. I wasn't really being intentional about getting those moments in. I wasn't really being intentional about getting a lot in, including sleep. Um, it was it was just not good. And the, the reality is my life wasn't going to slow down. Like, it was going to keep going. Um, 
and I finally like set like I finally set I think a lot of times I struggle with sitting still because I know what it means right because it's like I have this very um interesting relationship with God and um he like we we I want to say we talk you know like I would venture to say we talk um I feel like I'll say something or ask something and there's like this sensing I, you know, we, we communicate very well. Um, but the times where it's the greatest is when I'm sitting still. And I think one of the fears that I have is the fact that once you sit still and you hear God, then there's another step where you obey <laughs> and there's requirements that come with that. And I think while in theory, I was like, 30s come in, I'm ready, Lord. Like, let's do this. Tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. I, I also know what that means. And I think, you know, back to the subconscious, I think I was just trying, you know, not intentionally. I think I was subconsciously running still after I have made a commitment not to run. And then I get put in a position, you know, where I experience a disruption to my life and I'm placed in stillness it's kind of like jonah you know i identify with jonah um because what god was asking jonah to do was kind of tough you know and jonah flat out told god no and went the other way but then he ended up swallowed in the belly of a whale so then there's that you know don't run don't run from the Lord. Just surrender and submit to who and what he's asking you to do. Um, I got what I needed. I think there was a moment where I think sometimes we get in routines and we start going, going, going. Things are well. You know, we got our moment with God. And we're off to our day. And I think sometimes we don't stop enough to acknowledge where God has brought us from. And while having COVID, sitting in my house alone by myself, man, did God take me back. And it wrecked me, y'all, because I literally was like sitting and I had a thought and I was like, man, you know, it's, it's it, it literally paralleled with COVID, right? Because in my experience, like in being sick, there is a moment where it is so bad that you feel like it's not going to get better. Like it just, cause it's not, it's not from day to day, you're getting worse or you're staying the same, like you're not getting better. <laughs> and so I, I sat and thought about how there was this period in my life where it hurt so bad. Like I was in so much pain I was so depressed, like so hurt, so devastated, where the feeling that I had, it felt like there it wasn't going to get better. Like there there was no way. Like and I was literally like paralleling the two because in the middle, I'm telling y'all there is moments where you like Lord, I really don't I don't want to go right now, you know? And I had this moment where I literally stopped and was like, yo, I remember experiencing that pain and that hurt and that devastation and that depression and those suicidal thoughts and feeling like there was like no way that I would stay in that moment, right? Like there was no way that things would ever get better. In that moment, I never imagined the life I live today. Like I I never saw it. I I never conceived it. I never I I never never thought about it at all. And I had this moment like, dang, like what if I would have stayed there? Like what if that would have been the end for me? Like what if I would have given up whatever that looks like? And I had to like stop, man, and just give like I literally worshiped because I can imagine that there is someone who is listening to this or watching this. I can imagine that we've all in 2020 felt that way 
like man like i i thought that this was gonna get better here we are with the second wave you know and of covid and the pandemic and we're back about to go back in house and stay at home orders and it's like man i cannot see life outside of this like i can't see a better way and it's like <laughs> keep going like there were things that you prayed for for 2020 that if you stop and take a moment they happened right not the way that you intended for it to happen it looks nothing like you thought it was gonna look but it happened i mean i prayed for a lot of things in 2020 i'm gonna go back to my prayer because the way 2020 has been i don't even remember the prayers <laughs> But y'all, I'm in all seriousness, that quote at the top of this episode that change doesn't occur without a disruption is true. Like, think about a cat like caterpillar, which is interesting because there are like these little caterpillars all around my car one day. And my friend was like, yo, take like stuff like that is weird, but it always has a meaning. And that's the thing, like a cat before a caterpillar can be a butterfly, it has to go through a cocoon, like it has to go through process, right? That's disrupting because first of all, it goes away. It's tucked away. Like nobody sees it, it's isolated, it goes through this process, and then it becomes like this beautiful butterfly. But it's like anything we want in life requires a lot of things. It requires sacrifice, it requires obedience, it requires a disruption. I wanted to just share with you guys my disruption and I'm sure you can identify because all of our lives in 2020 have been disrupted in one way or another. Like our norms are, they don't exist at all. And now we have new normals, which again, don't exist because then they change. Like we are experiencing change on a day-to-day -day basis. Like things are not the same, but I don't want you to get stuck there. There was something else that Bishop said and he said, don't allow the disruption to become a distraction. And I'll tell you this, like I fought extremely hard um, not to drown in why is this happening to me? Never even asked it. The odd thing about it is that even before my test came back positive, I knew that it was positive because God had already let me know, like this is how this is gonna go. And I never once feared for my life either. I think there was one moment I was extremely scared um, because I was healed from asthma as a kid, but there was one night where to breathe, like breathing was like a job. And every time I inhaled, there was like this coughing spell and it was really bad, but God is a healer and he is faithful to do what he says he's going to do. There's a scripture in Proverbs 19 and 21 in the message version. Um, and it reads, we humans keep brainstorming options and plans, but God's purpose prevails. And I think that that is the word of the Lord for 2020. We can come up with some stuff. We can work it out. We can tell you how it's going to go. But I need you to know that at the end of the day, God's purpose prevails. So if you're in that moment and you feel like, man, Brenda, this is tough. Like, and I cannot see my way out of it. What I need you to know is that we have plans, but God's purpose prevails in spite of what it looks like. His purpose is going to prevail. Like there's so many words in the Bible where he tells us like his word accomplishes what he sent it out to do. And so whatever situation you're in, whatever, if you lost a job, if you lost a family member, if you just are stressed about where we are in life right now, I need you to find a word and put it on that situation and watch God move. Even if he doesn't move the way that you anticipate him or the way it looks like in your head, because we can brainstorm options and plans but it's God's purpose that will prevail. And it's never our job to figure out the how. It's only our job to do whatever it is that he says do. 
and and we can rest in the fact that he's going to bring it to pass. Like, and it's his job to figure out how to do that. Like, it's just my job to hear what God says and follow whatever it is that he tells me to do and watch him work. And I've seen that happen. It's literally the testament to my life that when God speaks, I move and watch him work. I've, I've moved into the provision for the word that he gave. And so it's like, man, y'all, I just hope that there's something that encourages you about this moment. I have experienced God on such a different level. And it's interesting because that hunger and that desire just to spend time with him, man, not for anything, but just to commune and grow with him like that hunger. It's now stirred, but it didn't happen the way that I thought it was going to happen. Um, but now there's just like this sensitivity um, to just wanting to have and carry out moments with him. And man, I'm excited. Like I pray that after you listen to this, that you would encounter Jesus in such a way that it transforms your life. But remember that change and that transformation can occur without a disruption. So embrace the disruption. Don't let it become a distraction and make sure you surrender to the moment that you're in because there's another version of Proverbs 19 and 21 that says, many are the plans in the man's heart, but God's purpose prevails. I love y'all. I really genuinely missed you. I cannot wait for you guys to engage and hang out and kick it for Life in Perspective Season 2. I'm getting it to you as fast as I can, but I want it to be done in excellence this was just an episode because I wanted to share with you guys first how God has healed me completely but just man to just embrace those moments that are unexpected because there are beautiful things that come out of them um I spent some amazing time with the father once I submitted to the moment and I got rest like just complete rest and now I'm rejuvenated and can handle the assignment that he's called me to for this season and so I just wanted to encourage you guys. I pray that I said something today that helped to put your life in perspective. I cannot wait to get back with you guys for season two. This has been an amazing journey so far. Um, make sure you guys join us for Bible study virtually. It's been amazing. We're growing in community and we're growing in our faith. And I just love you guys. Just stay tuned. Make sure you follow me on social media at I am Brenda Palmer. Subscribe to my YouTube channel because that's where all the content is going. I cannot wait. Like, I'm excited about what God's going to do in our lives. And I love you. This is Life in Perspective.